Hi, I am Bria Marcello. I am in the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion as the Director for Diversity Resources and Strategic Initiatives, which is a long title to say basically I work with faculty and staff and sometimes graduate student professional development. And so when I was asked here, you know, to talk a little bit about liberating structures, it's really interesting for me. So, you know, in our office, we are always trying to find like new ways of approaching um, education or just like implementation of certain, you know, structures or strategies and had actually come to a bit of a halt for myself, right? So I was training new people my, like on how to do some of the things that we had done previously, but uh, I was looking for new things myself, like as the, as the director, I was trying to find new things I could bring to my team uh, and just happened to be invited to do some of the um, liberating structure workshops um, through one of the, um, the uh, postdoctoral, the, um, the fellows. And so uh, I came into it and I was just really excited to get to be a participant, to be really frank. Uh, and then I think I was pleasantly surprised also by the, not only the facilitators, but the way that those particular workshops were structured, uh, mostly because it was all about application. Like it was really like something that I also try to do in some of our workshops is, you know, take a piece and apply it and immediately to something really purposeful. Um, and so what I think came out of that for me was I was also just trying to problem solve some different things and um, problem solve some really complex situations in which I was not the only decision maker. And so I think that a lot of liberating structures are created, even if they're just kind of something you pull out and plug into something else. But some of the other pieces are, were, and even the principles I think are really rooted in this element of how to include more individuals in a way that both they are part of the process and also at the same time kind of moving towards something, which I think sometimes we had felt very stuck. And so, you know, some of it became, you know, we use some really basic things that translated really well to Zoom. So, you know, I think about um, what the equivalent of like the mad tea structure in liberating structures we call a waterfall chat, you know, with a virtual setting, something like a spiral journal we use quite a bit. Um, when we were doing stuff around um, community spaces and needing to build safe spaces, just being able to center and ground ourselves. Uh, I've used elements of min specs a little bit to try to figure out at the baseline or some of the other kind of strategic planning ones um, a little bit. Um, though I also think, you know, there's a, there's a group that we have on campus that it was just like, well, we have no idea what this group's going to be. <laughs> I remember going through one of the workshop activities and um, and just saying like, well, how would this apply to this new group? Uh, and we really, we were able to identify some of the principles that really focused on, you know, how do we recognize that things can be solved at the local level while simultaneously having to have some sort of, you know, central feed of building together that we are still going to constantly be having to work on trust um, and that there are some things that are, you know, we're going to have a, a shared starting place. And so that was actually just being able to use the principles even every time we have those meetings is a really, really helpful way to just ground people in. This is how you get to participate and we are wanting you to be part of, you know, the process overall. 